Okay, we are live. Episode two. Episode two. Some Swipe technical up. difficulties just this time Again. before be, just before the episode. So for the people that were listening to the episode, um, available wherever you listen to podcasts. I just checked. I don't think we're on um, on iTunes yet, but Spotify and Anchor and all those other platforms that you listen to, we are live on. But I think we were able to muddle through the technical difficulties last time. And this time, we'll just hope to avoid them completely. Hopefully. We'll see. Hopefully these AirPods stay trusty for me, but audio quality won't be the best, but we'll fight through it. Well, nobody comes here for quality audio and video, Jordan. They come here for quality of content and substance. Exactly, so, Ty. And that's what we're delivering today. So, Jordan, why don't you talk about a little bit what we're going to be hopping into today? Because I'm excited. I've been talking about it a lot, but why don't you give a full on one on what we're going to be doing? For sure. So we're touching on content engagement today. So everything from what you should be looking for when you create the content, to what you should be doing when you post it, where to post it, who you're posting it for, who you're targeting, everything along those lines. Um, I'm gonna be touching more on what I'm looking for when I'm editing or creating, and then you'll be touching more on what you'll be looking for when you're posting. And we'll have examples for all of this. Yeah, no, I'm stoked. And this will be one, if you guys are listening, maybe you go over to YouTube, uh, search, search Swipe Up Podcast um, with these videos all get posted as both of or these podcasts all get posted as videos and audio. Um, and we'll be walking through some examples. We'll do our best to explain them, but it might just be helpful to see some. So like Jordan said, he's going to be jumping right. into sort of the creation side of things and I'll let him hop on a little screen share here um, and we'll yep. jump right into it. But uh, Jordan, what are some things that you're thinking about before you're even maybe start like pressing record or before you're even editing to kind of create those um, different levels of engagement? Perfect segue. Um, while I pull up screen share. So what I usually start with is three questions. And that's basically who, what, and why. Or who, who, where, why, sorry. So who's gonna see it? Where am I posting it? And why will they engage with it? Why will they even care? Um, so basically the where is which social media platform are you posting on LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube? You know, that's what we're social media posters. That's where we, you know, distribute our content for other companies. This could be TV billboard, you know, it can be different, but um, the, who is the, you know, the demographic, the industry, you know, who are we really trying to target with this content? Again, who is going to care um, for a real estate, um, someone trying to buy a house. This could be, you know, I'm posting a real estate video walkthrough tour. You know, I'm really trying to target those people, where are they gonna, you know, mostly be consuming that content? It's gonna be a YouTube or a Facebook. Um, now let me pull up. And this is a bit tangential, but I just wanna hop in. This is actually something I post on LinkedIn this week, but like your video, that where part really does matter. And maybe that's a whole episode. I'll actually write it down so we have that in the back of mind. But like a lot of people think they can maybe just post an omni present piece of content. Um, but it is important to know where you're going to be posting it just because yep. um, that's the, the style of content, you, like even something as superficial as aspect ratio to something all the way down is yep. like how you're, how you're going about creating it is going to be different per platform. But that might be something that we hop into later. I think we're going to probably yep. stick to a more, not necessarily high level, but just something that's a little bit more out of the weeds than, than that. For sure. Um, and just to quickly touch on the last question I asked myself is what basically what the purpose is. Um, and this can be something that's super simple, like you could really be showing off a product. Um, or it could be something to the extreme of, you know, this is the exact reason why you should hire XYZ real estate agent. Like I've made that type of video before. And I've made a three second video example, like uh, the fingerprint video I made for Jackson Jones, of me throwing keys and sunglasses in a catch-all tray. So the why can be um, different, it can be simple, it can be complex, um, but let's dive into, Ty, you said it was Chrome tab share audio, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, can we see this all right? I can see that perfectly. Okay, so this is, Basically, after I ask myself th those three questions, I have to figure out what's going to work content-wise. And so these are things like, you know, humor, flashiness, being unique, educational, relevant, telling a story. Um, this is an example of 
a humor post we did for VSM Real Estate. And this is actually the top performing post we've had at VSM since I've been there. And it was literally like we've done all these serious videos of agents introducing themselves to the business, to the company, to the you know the clients. And this one, we decided to use Alicia's blooper reel. Ooh, I can't Can hear, hear it. that I audio. Think, I think your audio is muted on Facebook. There we go. <laughs> Customer service is truly, no, it's not. That's not what I said. This is one of the most important decisions you'll make in your life. So it's literally just her okay, being, that's this is say. like who she is. Just like that. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> okay, so you get the gist. But that's an example of a piece of content that um, worked for BSM. It's been the top performing post since I've been there. And the other two top performing posts were podcast bloopers that we created. So humor really works. And for some reason, it really works at BSM Real Estate. Um, and so those have been like, actually, they were super fun to create. Everyone in the company was engaged with it. People were sharing it all over the place. Um, so that's something to take into account is just humor, humor aspect. Obviously, you don't want to get too overboard with it. But um, next would be, I touched on the aspect of being flashy. And a couple of weeks ago, Ty, I was on one of uh, a live stream with you. And I'm going to share the screen again. And, and I think a funny, is, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I just want to hop in about oh, the, the the humor part of it. I think it ties well into our conversation last week, which was like, you, if you post something funny or personal on LinkedIn, that that stands out from the standpoint of people aren't used to seeing it. And the same reason on a, maybe a, a VSM page where they're used to being sold, you know, real estate agents as as people to work with or listings as, as things to buy, um, that sort of like personified aspect behind it stands out, yeah. not because it's, particularly like good or particularly funny, but just due to the fact that it's not what people are expecting um, could really right. be effective. So I think it ties well into our conversation last week about LinkedIn with sort of the, the same yes. mentality. It's important to see people being people and not robots necessarily because business can get that way. So, mm -hmm. um, so this is an example of, I guess I would say a flashy post where it's the intent is to just make it look cool. So people will stay and watch till the end. Quick cuts. In my opinion, this is in no sense boring, and that's why it keeps people engaged. And it's quick, it's only 30 seconds long. Yeah. We could have found so, that sound design too, which was incredible. Yeah, I know, right? I forgot we didn't get that last time, but yeah. Um, Next would be, you know, the uniqueness factor, educational. These are all types of questions you're going to ask yourself after you figure out where you're going to post it, who you're going to post it to, what the message is going to be. Um, educational videos, in my opinion, tend to do well when they're really well targeted. So we've had a lot of luck posting to Facebook with these types of videos. Instagram and TikTok, it's going to be. Um, a little bit different based on what kind of content you're actually posting. TikTok actually, I mean, if you keep it under, I don't know, 30 seconds, you can, you know, capture an audience pretty well. Um, but then another big thing is relevance. It's got to be relevant to the time. So right now, uh, coronavirus, right? Quarantine, topics like that, like those are all going to, you know, increase in engagement just because that's relevant. People feel like they're involved because it's happening right now. Um, but yeah, I guess I have, let's see. And I, and I think a big part of that too is, and this might segue a little bit into my section, but I know we still have some stuff with the creation part to go over. Um, but that's just being, what is the value proposition when you're creating a piece of content? Um, and then when you're inevitably distributing it, because people like, unfortunately, and I wish this was the case, and you probably know this more so, Jordan, as somebody that like is really creating content, like they're not just going to watch a, 30 second video, five minute video, 10 minute video, because you put a ton of time into it. Like, unfortunately, yeah. your your time input into a piece of content isn't 
good enough for people to want to sit there and, and consume it. Like there has to be an additional reason um, to for them to want to watch it besides you sinking time into it and posting it. And all those things exactly. that you just went over, whether it be funny or flashy or, or unique or educational, like those are all really good examples and really important things for you to be considering when you're even before you're creating a piece of content, um, because that's what's going to inevitably drive that engagement and, and drive the results that you're looking for from a piece of content. For sure. And then I'll just end with, um, so I have one more clip to show, but I guess when I started this, I guess, you know, career of producing content and whatnot, I would post, say my finished product. So finished product for motive. And I would post that same video on every single platform. And obviously the engagement would vary. And then I started to realize, okay, well maybe Instagram needs to have more behind the scenes. Facebook can be the finished product. YouTube can be the finished product. You know, TikTok can just be super unique and crazy behind the scenes, like on the fly. Um, so that's when I started to vary what I was posting and how I was posting it. And this is an example of what's worked for me on Instagram and TikTok has just been mm -hmm. I love these behind the scenes shots like this, showing yeah. how I get to the final shot. And then obviously it's a carousel, so I'm tossing in the finished product as well. But having that obviously. first, we love carousels in this podcast. We are a very pro oh, carousel sure. podcast. But this also, I mean, like probably 99% of the people aren't going to go recreate this if they're not, you know, in the industry. But just watching it, it's interesting to them because they want to see how you get to a finished product. It's interesting. 100%. They don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, I, th I think for somebody like me who is very surface level into videography and, and content and stuff like that, that's really interesting to me. Um, but I think it has a, a point of relevance to everybody. Like everybody sees advertisements and sees really flashy content every yeah. single, like we, we are so inundated with content every single day that it, it, it's really cool to see how the sausage is made, but from like a good standpoint. Um, and I think that has a really high appeal. And I think it again, comes back to adding a human element behind, behind what you're doing, because For we're sure. all, like I said, we're all bombarded with content every single day. Um, it's cool to see that there's people like you that are being creative behind it and, and how they do it and all that sort of stuff. So I, I, I love that stuff. hundred percent. All right. Should we dive into the, the actual posting of the content? Yeah. So once you have, once you're fortunate to have great content from somebody um, like Jordan, there's obviously an aspect of, of posting it. Um, and I, I sort of want to break it down into two different um, sectors. Um, I'll do an example, five-star post, um, just because I can always get a good sample size of like what works and what doesn't work on there. Um, and then I'll do one of my recent LinkedIn posts. Um, and so this whole, le this whole levels of engagement thing, it was like really clear to me. Um, I'm going to share my screen really quick. It was really clear to me. Um, when I started like posting on five star, like it all of a sudden just made complete sense. So you can kind of see here as I do like a brief overview of like all these posts, but like all, a lot of these posts are TikToks, which means that there's already text in the video, um, which is a huge reason why I think TikTok is a super engaging platform. There's so many ways that somebody can engage with a piece of content on TikTok. There's obviously the visual element. So what's going on like in the screen and you're not gonna be able to hear this, which is fine. Um, so there's a visual element and then there's going to be text that pops up and then there's oftentimes like music or a sound behind it that is also mm -hmm. playing into the joke. So there's like three different levels of engagement um, for somebody to be watching a TikTok and I've transferred that over um, curating a lot of my content for this page um, from TikTok and it's had huge success on Instagram because people are looking for the same things there. They're looking for um, various levels of engagement. You know, you could feasibly watch this video without sound and understand it, but then you can have an even deeper understanding when you watch it with sound and kind of be, you know, come into the joke a little bit more. Uh, and right. then besides that, um, there's a caption. So theoretically, if, if somebody reads the caption, they maybe get even more of an insight on a joke. I sort of think about um, posting things like I have to understand, um, you know, posting a lot of memes and a lot of jokes and stuff like what jokes people are going to understand um, and what jokes maybe need a little bit more explaining. And that that caption is just another another place to to explain that or to be relatable or to add my own commentary and stuff like that. So like with an Instagram post, which I know isn't relevant to everybody, not everybody's running like meme pages, but 
you know, just think of how many different levels of engagement you can get on videos. And you can see this one has over 200,000 views, which is insane. Um, but there's, you know, this visual aspect, there's text that pops up on the screen, there's a sound that makes the joke even funnier. And then there's a caption where I can add my commentary or sort of explain the joke even more. So that's four different points of contact, which is really maximizing a single piece of content, especially something that's probably only 15 seconds long in the first place. And right. there's so many ways that people can do it. So I want to I wanted to show this post. You know, this video didn't inherently have um, sound over it or didn't didn't have um, text overlaid on it. Um, so then I went on my way to create these sort of templates, which you can see I, I post one every three posts um, that add that textual aspect to it. Um, so I can increase that level of engagement even more. And if I could show you my insights, which I can't on my desktop, you'll see that most of my top performing posts are, in fact, um, those ones that have, you know, text overlays on them. So why do you think that is Ty? I think it really comes back to that levels of engagement. So you can look at this post and yeah. you are either a drawn in by what what it says. So, you know, when I say coach is trying to earn a scholarship, you know, what like how, why? Like you have so many questions yeah. that aren't answered. And so I can sort of draw you in with that. And then as you watch it, you sort of come in onto the joke. And now all of a sudden you not only have answers to your questions, but you're in on a joke that I'm in on somebody at a point of authority because I have all these followers. And then you're in on a joke that like 150,000 people are also in on. So that's something that you're going to be more willing to engage with. You're going to want to share that joke with other friends and, and different stuff like that. Um, and then and again, you can, you can kind of see just, here that I hop in even more on the joke, like with, with the caption. So it's just creating right. all the different levels. And just real quick, I think there's something to be said too. I mean, if you're physically scrolling through Instagram and you, you know, a video starts playing, your eyes don't, at least in my opinion, and when I'm scrolling, my eyes don't go right away to the caption. It's seeing what the content is first. But yeah. if you have something like that, their eyes go directly to, you know, coach was trying to get a scholarship. And then they're like, okay, why? Like I'm drawn in now. And then like you 100. said, then they go to the caption and you build off the joke even more. So yeah. I think that's really important as well. Yeah. And I, and I like to kind of break down levels of like, it's important to have levels and like we keep saying levels of engagement. All this really means is being able to have checkpoints for the people watching your content um, to be able to say like, okay, I don't want to sync my whole, my whole, whatever it is, like say 60 seconds or like a five minute video. Like, I don't want to sync five minutes into watching this video. Can I get usable information out of it without spending all my time on that video. And so that works for Instagram and that works for what I'll show here in a second being LinkedIn. But you know, the levels here are sort of meant to draw you in um, while the levels on LinkedIn are sort of meant to convey information without you having to spend, you can see here, eight minutes watching a video. So if somebody comes to this post on LinkedIn, um, they can kind of see, and I try to do this the best I can in my, in my captions, like this is basically just an outline of what the video is about. Like if you read that outline, you would pretty much get the gist of what the video is. And I can't try to the screen tie. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to share the there other screen. Um, but what you'll see is that um, you you'll be able to get like a sort of very general outline of, of how the video um, might pertain to you, you know, why you might want to watch it more. And then I hope to in the video color in some of those details. So it's really a matter of, okay, here's, here's what your here's what the meat of what you're going to be watching is. And if you're interested in that, here's eight more minutes of supplementary content um, for you to sort of satiate that, that need to, to fill in um, what I briefly outlined. So these levels kind of allow for people, like I said, at the, at the beginning, allow for them to engage with it at a very minimal level and then still be able to contribute ideas, thoughts, comments, um, and so on, on this post um, and, and not have to sink eight minutes of their time into the video. So that was kind of a, a, a word purge, but I think um, I, I think it's sort of a good a good kind of two examples of like drawing people in and then providing more information for people that want to stay in and watch additional content without forcing them to sink in, you know, eight minutes of their time to be able to effectively engage. Right. Um, and just to quickly touch on it, why do you think so if you were to post that same LinkedIn video with the same overarching caption, why wouldn't that work? on an Instagram. So I think it's going to come back to, and I think we're really going to have to do a, a, a an episode on this, like the difference in content that you post across different platforms. Um, yeah. it, it comes down to the video about this this week, but it comes down to expectations on, on platforms. So 
when you go on YouTube, you sort of expect to sit down there and watch stuff for a while. When you're on Instagram, you're maybe on there for, I know I almost have like this tick where I'll just pick up my phone and like scroll for a couple seconds and be like, wait, I've already seen all of this and then stop. So like somebody's session time on Instagram might be as short as 30 seconds. So yeah. it's all about what their expectation is going into a video, right? And you have to understand where your platform falls in, in that hierarchy of people's expected time spent. So on YouTube, it's okay to post a longer video because people are going to be sitting down and watching videos for, you know, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour on LinkedIn. It probably fits somewhere around that YouTube. I, I kind of put it in between under YouTube and above Facebook um, in terms mm -hmm. of how long people are going to spend on the platform. Um, but even then people aren't going to be looking to spend much more than, you know, I put sort of the number at five minutes on a, on a video and that's really at the high end. So it's important to answer your question, to understand how long people are going to be um, spending on that platform. It comes back to your question of where is this going to be? Um, because that's really going to fine tune how you, how you post something. So for what works on five stars, Instagram account is kind of quick hitting humor, something that you can understand and digest and engage with within like, 30 seconds, probably even less than that. Um, whereas on LinkedIn, it's going to be a more drawn out um, conversational based post where, you know, you spend a time reading, spend some time watching, spend some time engaging um, and having more of an in-depth conversation. So it really comes back to what you said earlier, which is that where portion of, of, of the creating the content yeah. and then that carries over into posting it. That's funny that you, you mentioned, you know, picking your phone up and just scrolling for 30 seconds. And then like, yeah. I've done that and, I'll scroll past, scroll past like a video that I know I want to watch, but it's just like as a habit or where I am, just like I don't have the time to watch it. So like in my head, I'll be like, okay, I need to go back and watch that later. Yeah, and I just never do. <laughs> but that's just the nature of the platform, I feel like. Yeah. And that's why things like people talk about subtitling their videos for LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram. Like that's why that stuff is important. That's just another level of engagement where somebody can watch it without sound. You know, you have to make it this comes back to what I said earlier, you have to make it the easiest you can for somebody to digest your content because you're like, just because, like I said earlier, just because you spent so much time on it doesn't mean you're owed any amount of views or engagement. Unfortunately, it'd be great if it worked that way, but that's not yeah. how it works. So you have to literally make it as easy. Like you got to be spoon feeding people um, content or like what they should be thinking or how they should be engaging with it. Because like you said, if, if you see something you're not in the mood to, you're just going to scroll right past it. And all of a sudden you scrolled past 10 hours of somebody's work. And however unfortunate that is, that's just how it works. For sure. And I totally forgot to bring up like captioning videos and stuff, but that's a big portion of, I guess, what goes into my decisions when I'm figuring out where to post something. Mm -hmm. um, and it's especially important, obviously, when more of the videos dialogue, like I think if you're posting to Facebook and Instagram where there's some crazy stat, I think it's like, 70 to 80% of people watch video every time without sound. Yeah. So it's like, if you have dialogue in your video, they're just going to scroll right by it because they don't have sound on. But if you have that caption, it's again, another level of engagement that's going to bring them to your video, keep them there and hopefully get them to take action. So. And a ton of these platforms now have autoplay, which means that somebody could be sitting there watching it sort of still in their timeline without clicking to expand the entire video. Um, Facebook is the most popular for having that. Um, Instagram obviously has it. I think LinkedIn now has autoplay. So when you're scrolling it and seeing it in your feed, you maybe will sit there for two seconds. And if all of a sudden captions don't pop up and you realize that it's maybe a little harder to engage, again, that's a, another scroll right past situation. So um, it's important to obviously hit people early and often within your content. Um, but you're, you're completely right where it really would dictate a lot of a lot of watch time. For sure. Um, I want to touch on just going back to five star. Yeah. So how much do you see that you, I guess, overlapped content? So uh, you utilize, you repurpose, I guess, your five star experiences for, you know, LinkedIn. I do see that a lot. But mm -hmm. like, does five star have a TikTok and a Twitter where you're posting the same stuff? Or is it different content? Or what is that process like? Yeah. So Factor does have a TikTok. I accidentally messed up and made a really popular TikTok like last summer. <laughs> like I I posted um something on a five star on the five star TikTok account and the first video got like over a million views, which yeah. seems to be a lot of people's experience with TikTok. And like it blew up to like literally eighty thousand followers within the first like couple of weeks. And then school started again and I kind of put that on the lower priority list. Um and so it's just sort of been sitting like I maybe will post a couple times like a month, um, but it's been sitting fairly dormant um, and it's been weirdly really hard to get any sort of traction like 
86,000 followers. And like, you know, if you post a video now, it maybe gets like 10,000 views. And so it's probably just a matter of, you know, being consistent again and, and sort of utilizing all of these different strategies, but again, on TikTok. Um, but no, a lot of the stuff that I post is, um, the directionality is from TikTok um, to Instagram, um, and I've, I'm just focusing heavily on Instagram. Um, I, I, there are there is space, obviously, for other platforms and stuff like that. But the the uh, the place that TikTok holds in my life right now, or that Five Star holds in my life right now, is definitely not warranting of like having all these different platforms and, and stuff like that. Maybe one day it will, but um, I don't really remember your initial question. I think you talked about like overlap and strategies. Over, yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, if you have one piece of content. Are you posting it to the same i'm talking like the same exact piece you have one video and you're posting mm -hmm. it to TikTok, instagram and linkedin which i already yeah. touched on you don't do that with linkedin because you're you're more touching on your experiences which right. again is another great way to repurpose in my opinion which is a whole other podcast episode yeah. topic too and that goes back to sort of your behind the scenes aspect like it's a uh, yep. it's that it's the the center of what you're posting is about that piece of content but you're showing different angles of that on on different platforms um and and to your point about repurposing content and i think that's a whole different conversation but um i think it you know for me i often try to make content as universally applicable because i think there's a lot of heavy overlap between especially the big three being instagram um facebook and twitter like there's a lot of overlap in in how you can post content and how you can structure captions and the types of videos and, and pictures that you can post. Um, and so I try to make those posts as universal as possible. But if you were getting really nitty gritty and really into it, um, I think you'd probably focus more on video um, and like nicer photo stuff on, on Instagram, um, maybe yeah. post on a bit longer form stuff on Facebook, and then try to go more commentary, like um, hard hitting and, and fast hitting style on Twitter. Um, if you were to get, really get granular with it. And again, I think that's the conversation that we should have on a, on a whole nother episode. But I think there are the short answer is I think there are universal principles enough where you could post the same piece of content on all platforms and have a pretty standard level of success. Like one thing really quickly that I, I really like about a lot of these platforms is they're adapting content in the feed to be 1080 by 1080 and like that full square profile shows up on everything. So like on Twitter, if you post a, a square video, like it'll show up square more, like it'll yeah. take up more space in the feed essentially. And the same thing with Instagram, the same thing with Facebook. So like from that point of view, you could post the same video format across all platforms. So it's like, there's right. different stuff like that, that, that will apply. For sure. And that's, I guess, going back to the, the, you know, aspect ratio talk or something that I didn't really dive into either, but it's important because I'll post a finished product video to, to YouTube and obviously 1920 by 1080, yep. but I'll frame it in Premiere Pro. I'll add a, you know, 1350 by 1080. So it's more vertical and that's mm -hmm. the maximum you can have on Instagram. So when you're scrolling, it takes up the whole feed and I'll just, I'll leave the, the 1920 by 1080, but just, you know, put a background that's tall behind it. That way it's it's still taking up the most space, yeah. but it doesn't squish in the video. I think I think that's one of the most underutilized aspects of social media right now. And like something that you know you and I could really capitalize on or, or anybody that's listening. And I think there was a big a, a sort of a micro boom around it when like IGTV made its first splash. And I don't even know yeah. who who uses that anymore. Instagram's done a good enough job integrating it into their main app, but like I don't know who actually opens up IGTV and watches stuff. Right. Um, but there's this really interesting conversation around how you can utilize that vertical aspect ratio because you're totally right 1920 by 1080 is the most useless aspect ratio for a video on social media these days like now that all yep. platforms have adapted to be able to handle different aspect ratios like posting on youtube is great for 1920 by 1080 but you should not be posting 1920 by 1080 on most other platforms you know unless yeah. you're just posting to facebook or maybe just posting to twitter like those are ones that can yeah. handle it but like certainly not instagram um, and like LinkedIn, I suppose works as well, but, but even then those, those allow for different aspect ratios. And I think the interesting conversation that happened for a while, and I haven't heard a lot of now is really creative ways to utilize that vertical space. Like I've seen people use it really effectively and use it super cool. And that's so much space that you have to fill, but that's also so much space that's taken up in the timeline that if you can do it effectively and creatively, like that's, it's super easy to watch. All of a sudden you can repurpose that to stories and like all these other platforms that are TikTok and, you know, Quibi just like there's people are trying to embrace this vertical aspect ratio, but I haven't seen people effectively utilize it. And it's, it admittedly is difficult to make stuff specifically for vertical because there aren't platforms that support that full 
vertical aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. But if you can do it effectively, man, I think that's like, I, I think that's a way to differentiate yourself for sure. For sure. I 100% agree that it's definitely underutilized. And that's what I've been trying to do is just try to find creative ways to utilize it. And I've actually gotten feedback. I think you've mentioned it a couple of times. I know the back pocket boys have reached out and said, Hey, love, like, it's just something simple, like love how you frame this in your yeah. post. Like, so I think it's for sure underutilized and people should be capitalizing on it. I don't know if it's, you know, they don't have, I guess the resources, but I mean, there's, there's apps out there that make it pretty simple. Yeah. Well, I think the difficult part is too, like when you shoot, you're shooting for horizontal and yeah. all of a sudden when you have to go and edit something vertically, like the whole way that you framed your shot isn't the same like it's all of a sudden it takes so much more work so that's why it's interesting to me like if people went out like if you went out jordan and you shot solely for, you're like you shot with horizontal in mind or like with vertical in mind like that yeah. I, I i think there'd be a lot of interesting success there and then there's different ways that you can edit and frame you know it's just it's just super interesting to me so maybe jordan you and i have to be pioneers of that space but like i'll just be on i'll be on snapchat and i'll see like these different snapchat shows and like you know new yeah. stuff that people have and it's like it's so well done like people do yeah. such a good job at, at creating that sort of stuff and i just think that for whatever reason and it's probably just a matter of like it's too much work for what it's worth that people aren't fully taking advantage of it but for sure that's a that's a, that's a tangent and, and we probably have to go in on a whole episode about like differencing and differences of creating content for different platforms so yeah i feel like we just came up with five episode topics just talking today well i'm so, I'm, I'm excited because that's uh you know that gives us more stuff to talk about so exactly well shoot rolling okay. for a half hour anything else I, ty no, it, it flies by. I think a half an hour is sort of a, a neat and tidy um, place yeah, to like it. place to keep this. So thank you, everybody, for watching and, and listening. And sort of as we, you know, as Jordan and I talked about creating this podcast, we really had this whole idea of having like an MVP, like, you know, Jordan's recording a podcast through his AirPods right now. Um, we understood that we weren't going to be perfect right away um, and we didn't want to waste the time making a perfect podcast right away um, that we were going to grow and evolve and and kind of create better and better product as, as we went along. So we appreciate you sticking with us through these early episodes as we you know try to get podcasts on streaming services and try to figure out how to go live to YouTube and make thumbnails and like all the stuff that you just don't ever think about have to figure out. Um, but we appreciate you guys sticking with us through it uh, because we are going to do this more and we're going to get better and, and it's going to be a hopefully a valuable product for everybody listening. Absolutely. It's no fun if everything just goes perfectly right away. Then you right. have nothing to look back on, right? Yeah, you have not you you have nowhere to go. And right now we have nowhere to go but up. So a butt up. There's nowhere else to go. It, it really it really I mean we are <laughs> if you're watching this far, you are bottom of the barrel. You must have nothing else to watch. So we uh yep. we appreciate everybody watching. Um we'll be back next week. Same place, same time, probably. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But yep. thank you everybody. Um make sure to go follow us on LinkedIn or connect with us on LinkedIn. That's where we're going to be probably like pivoting a lot of stuff out of, out of from. So LinkedIn, yes. Instagram, just search our names and you'll find us. And also go start following God, if people are watching this long as they're saints, but go follow us on, <laughs> on, on Instagram, um, swipe up podcast and you'll find it there probably. Yep. We'll start posting stuff there too, but yeah, maybe like maybe Ty not. said, we're just figuring stuff out. Yeah, no promises. Good Lord. Nobody's listening anyway. Okay. <laughs> <All> <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, Jordan's going to end the live stream now.